It's September 4th, 1996. Tupac just flew into New York City to attend the 96 MTV Awards as a presenter and a nominee for Best Rap Video for his number one hit song, California Love. The rap game is in the middle of a media-influenced East and West Coast beef with the flames being ignited even more since the release of Hit Em Up back in June 4th, 1996. Most New York artists are upset with Tupac ever since he drew the line to pick a side in his beef with Bad Boy, even disrespecting several top New York artists including one of the top rap group from Queensbridge, Mob Deep, who was a close associate with another top Queensbridge rapper, Nah who was celebrating one of his best years since releasing It Was Written back in July, which spawned one of his top songs ever, If I Ruled the World. This made Nas the top artist representing New York and East Coast at the time. He was scheduled for a surprise performance with the Fugees at the award show. Now, it's also Tupac's first time back in his birth state since releasing Hit Em Up back in June. Even more, it's the same place he was shot five times a year and a half ago. So his team is on high alert for any threats. Suge Knight made sure all of his artists had security, but Tupac back in August requested no further personal security services from Death Row's hired security. So he asked two of his outlaw members, Napoleon and Hussein Fatal, to gather some of their homeboys from their hoods in nearby New Jersey to beef up security as well. Napoleon had his crew at the hotel who brought a bag full of guns to make sure everyone had protection. Hussein Fatal also reached out to his neighborhood goons to meet them at the hotel as well. Surprisingly, his crew was so big that they packed a full city bus with a line of cars following. Once they arrived at the hotel Death Row was staying at, Tupac's crew told them they can't all come to the award show, but feel free to wait in the rooms and order whatever they want. And they made sure to party, ordering everything they could, from food to champagne and whatever else they had to offer. Before heading out of his room, Tupac gifted Fatal his Death Row chain and a Rolex to wear to the award show. Next, they stopped to get the dog father, Snoop Dogg who just had his hair fresh delayed, perm looking silky smooth. Now that the Death Row stars are together, they set to head out to the award show. They split up in separate limos. Snoop and Shug with security got in one, while Tupac and the Outlaws and a few Jersey goons got in their own. Tupac told Fatal since he already got the bandana on and the jewels like him to sit by the window so he could get the extra attention from the fans who would think he was him. On the way, Tupac saw a group of baddies stopped in the limo and asked them, who you want? And the women, picked Fatal, which he obliged by getting their digits. Finally arriving at the awards show, the two stars of Death Row Records were shining bright. Tupac and Snoop with a pair of duo of the evening. Snoop freshly off beating a murder case with a not guilty verdict with the new focus to take the rap game by storm again. While Tupac is the biggest artist in music at this time, not just rap. Coming off of two number one albums, Me Against the World and All Eyes on Me, also getting praise for his known acting skills with tons of movie role offers coming in, including Jedi Master Mace Windu in an upcoming Star Wars film, making him the most sought after artist at the time. Tupac and Snoop going to take photos and give interviews with the press while the entourage stood at the entrance waiting. Once done, on the way out, someone from Nas' crew accidentally bumps into Tupac. And he replied, Yo mother f when you see me, get on the other side. And the other guy replied, my fault, my fault, Pac, my fault. As soon as he got back with his crew, screamed, hey, yo, f you, Pac. Then Fatal and his crew stepped up, ready to set it off. Luckily, without knowing what was going on, Suge with the rest of Death Row Records security stepped in to guide them into the awards show. Both parties then split to head into the event. MTV had a section for the entourage to wait at with food and drinks while the celebrities would head out to watch the show or backstage to prepare for their parts in the event. Tupac left his crew to head backstage preparing to present an award with Snoop for Best Hard Rock Video. A few minutes later, Nas with his crew arrived. Next, Nas left them to head backstage to prepare for his performance. While waiting to present the award backstage, Tupac and Nas crossed paths. Nas said to Tupac, hey, do your thing. Tupac replied, and you do yours. During the same time, Nas's brother, Jungle, was at the bar macking to a beautiful lady who said she was there with Death Row just waiting on them. A flirting Jungle said, F Death Row, I'll snatch one of their chains if I see them. Suggested she should instead go with him. Next, the young lady noticed security from Death Row walking over to escort her to their section. She warned Jungle, you won't keep that same energy when they come over here. 
in which Jungle stepped in, saying, She's with me. Mob Deep is in the house, and I'll take a death row chain off your neck. It's Queensbridge. Ignoring the threats, they walked away with the young lady. At this time, Tupac and Snoop are on stage presenting their award for Best Hard Rock Video, which Metallica wins with Until It Sleeps. Tupac, now done presenting the award, got news of the threat made at the bar. Immediately, Tupac went over to confront the group Jungle was with, asking who made that threat, prompting Jungle to say, I said I'll take one of y'all chains. It's Queensbridge in the house. Quickly, Gaddafi stepped in, pulled out two razors, and said it's death row. I'm here to die. What's good? Next, Napoleon jumped in and got behind the upset group. Security grabbed Tupac and took him away. Both parties started exchanging words. Then, Shook stepped in, saying, Yo, f*** that nigga, let's get back to what we came here for. Then both parties went their separate ways. Now Nas is done with his performance and sees the aftermath. Asked Jungle what happened. Jungle told him Tupac's crew was about to jump. Now upset with the thought of his brother getting jumped, Nas calls all his goons from Queensbridge to link up in case they meet again, prompting almost every goon from Queensbridge to get together, heading to the awards show to represent. Tupac's California Love video was nominated for Best Rap Video against LL Cool J's Doing It. Julio's Gangsta's Paradise and Bone Thugs and Harmony's The Crossroads. Unfortunately, Tupac didn't walk away as a winner that night, with the award going to Julio. The award show is finally to the end. Tupac and Snoop sit down for an interview on the way out. Finally done with the roles in the award show, Death Row gets back into their limos, heading back to their hotel. On the way out, Tupac meets with Eric B, talks to him about how they are establishing a new label called Death Row East, about his One Nation album focused on unifying everyone to show there's no real East or West Coast beef. Eric B liked it and wanted to link with Tupac and planned to meet up at the after party. Now back at the limo, for whatever reason, Tupac no longer felt the urge of going to the after party, preferring to do his own thing. Arriving back at the hotel where the rest of the 100 Jersey goons was waiting, Tupac was surprised by how many people Fatal brought with him, jokingly saying, I told you to bring n****s, but not this many. Now as the king of music, feeling obligated to show them a good time since they came here in defense of him, Tupac decided to take them all to the after party. Him and Suge had a van full of Death Row E shirts and decided to have everyone put them on. Then, randomly, a bellhop of the hotel kept asking Suge, where's the party at? Yo, Suge, where's the party at? Tupac stepped in saying, we don't know. The bellhop said angrily to Tupac, I wasn't talking to you. Tupac then threatened him, I'll have these beat your ass to strip your butt ass naked out here. The bellhop quickly settled down and got in his place. With it being such a big group, there was limited options in transportation. With the after party just a few blocks down from their hotel, Tupac decided for everyone to walk, and everyone then lined up behind him, with him leading the way. On the way while walking down the New York streets, they were giving money to fans and poor people they'd come across. The event was at Bryant Park in Manhattan, which is a big area with little to no security, just a bunch of celebrities having a good time. The event was full of stars. Some of Tupac's crew, including Snoop, split to mingle with other celebrities and associates. Making his way around the party, Snoop crossed paths with Nas' crew, who approached him and asked if he had any beef. Snoop replied, no, that's between y'all. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Then walked away. Nas now, back behind his Queensbridge army, was amped, ready to confront Tupac and death row about any beef. Still at the entrance, Tupac with his army was stopped for the famous interview where he said, do you believe in God? Believe in Death Row East. Dissing Nas and everyone else he felt was against him. After the interview, they headed further into the park. Now mixed with a bunch of local New York rappers, including Eric B, who was representing Queensbridge as well, warned Tupac that Nas was deep with a bunch of goons and how they need to meet together to talk it out, to cool off the tension on both sides, saying Nas is a good cat and it would be good for hip hop if they got together. Now that everyone is at the party vibing out, the music is playing, everyone's drinking, having a good time, getting lit off that Henny. Playing loud on the speakers was Nas' song, If I Ruled the World, featuring Lauryn Hill. Tupac started dancing to it, reciting the lyrics, throwing up West Side. All of a sudden, Nas' crew spots Tupac. 
Tupac now notices Nas's crew coming towards him. Immediately following, they both stormed towards each other. Only problem was, Tupac didn't bother to check if his crew was with him, while Nas had all of his Queensbridge army behind him, and they quickly surrounded Tupac. Nas asked Pac, is there any beef? Everyone loudly, cursing, sending threats, some making it obvious they were strapped, letting Pac know what time it is. Pac is arguing back and forth with him, even though, with everyone just screaming and shouting, no one could be heard. Death Row East noticed Tupac was surrounded and quickly made their way in. Mighty Banga stepped in right behind Nas, prompting Jungle to yell, Get away from my brother! Though Nas had a crew of about 40 plus deep, he was still outnumbered, but most were strapped, ready to go to war. With an intense standoff pursuing, each person waiting for a sign from Pac or Nas to set it off. Then, in the middle of both surrounding armies, Tupac and Nas stepped to each other. Nas then asked Tupac, why you diss Mob D? I heard you got a diss song coming at me too. Tupac replied, I do. Y'all were dissing me at your shows in Atlanta and in Chicago. I heard it all. Nas said, it's because you diss Mob Deep and you diss Queens Bridge. Pac replied, I'll fight Mob Deep straight up. I'll beat their ass. Nas basically said to just stop going at them because it's not even a real beef. And to summarize, Pac said, I have to rep for the West to the fullest against anyone dissing us from the East Coast. How most of his enemies are from here and how a lot of people are picking sides against him on the East Coast. Next, Suge Knight makes his way through the crowd to defuse the situation, telling everyone to calm down. A hype jungle looked at Suge, told one of the homies to pull out his gun and shoot Suge. Suge security steps in. I don't think you want to do that. Suge now telling Nas to calm his homies down. Nas's crew is now growing impatient, ready to start the war off. Everyone still screaming and shouting threats. Realizing it was about to get ugly, Nas stepped up and quieted his people. Tupac then quieted his people so he could speak. Remember when I first met y'all, I showed you all love. Nas and his crew agreed. Tupac continued, we need to come together to make this money, explaining how he doesn't know who to trust since being shot and jailed in New York. To everyone's surprise, Tupac and Nas embraced, both saying we brothers and let's make some money together. Now with everyone calmed down, they make plans to work together. Tupac then told Nas he would remove his name from his diss records and told him about Death Row East and how he wants to unify both coasts to show us no real beef and just focus on making money. They both made plans to meet up in Vegas in a few days to record on Tupac's One Nation album. Now that peace has been made, everyone is starting to get back into the party, but before they went their separate ways, Tupac stopped and said to Nas and his crew, yo, when y'all leave here, you're going to hear a lot of shit about me. Just remember. I love y'all n****s, then walked away. Right after Tupac turned to Suge and told him he was going to remove Nas diss from Against All Odds and watch your mouth. The party had a section where fans could watch the event behind the barricade. Randomly, Tupac noticed a bum sitting on the street, walked over, gave him a wad of cash saying, this is for you to sleep in a nice hotel tonight. A fan behind the barricade yelled, Pac! Pac, you don't have love for New York? Pac replied, of course I got love for New York. I'm from New York. I was broke, now I'm a millionaire. And threw stacks of cash to the crowd with his mob of death row East and white tees following behind him. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe for more. And also check out some of our other videos that we have on the channel. And we appreciate all our new subscribers and hope everyone has a great new year.